Oklahoma City Thunder fans can say hello to the perfect fit and another seven-foot project. From the Opubco Studios in Oklahoma City, I'm sports editor Mike Sherman, and this is Inside Thunder Basketball with Darnell Mayberry. Darnell, why was James Harden the perfect fit for the Thunder? Everything he did. I mean, when you look at uh, James Harden as a player, uh, he fit the Thunder. He's the shooter that they need. He spreads the floor. He was Russell Westbrook an opportunity to work and create for themselves. Uh, you know, when he he's a distributor. I mean, he can create plays for others. So he's a connector. You know, he's a guy that makes the extra pass. He's the guy that can get in the paint, create things for other people. Not only did he score 20.1 points per game, leading the Pac-10. Uh, in scoring last year, but he can also facilitate and be sort of your glue guy. Uh, and I think that's an important fit for the Thunder. Uh, Sam Presti, you know, likes team players. Uh, as far as character, he loves high character guys. I mean, you know that. And one thing he hates is uncertainty. There seemed to be a lot of uncertainty in the end about Rubio. Is that right. why he stayed away from the Spanish point guard? Yeah, there was a lot of uncertainty. I mean, you look at Rubio's contract, whether or not he's even going to come over and play next season, uh, you know, whether or not he wanted to play in Oklahoma City at all. Uh, there was a lot of uh, question marks on Rubio, uh, and Harden had far less, in my opinion, so I think that's another reason they went with Harden. Okay, late in the first round, the Thunder gets uh, B.J. Mullins from Ohio State, a seven-footer. This franchise, when it was in Seattle, kept drafting seven-footers over and over again, kept drafting seven-foot projects. Why is this one different? You know, I think he's athletic. I mean, you look at the way that this guy moves, the things that he can do uh, from an agility standpoint. Uh, he's seven foot one and he's agile. I don't think you can teach that uh, with these young, young big guys today. Uh, when you see a guy like that, a prospect that's on the board that late in the draft, I think you have to take a chance on him. Here's a guy who would have been a top five pick uh, had he been eligible to come out of high school into the league uh, and, and enter the league directly. Uh, but he, he couldn't. He went to Ohio State. People saw some flaws in his game. He only started two games, and I think that raised a lot of question marks in people's minds. Okay, we got a long way to go before these guys really start trying to fit into the roster. But tell me, where do you see Harden fitting in right away as, as the th when the Thunder opens the season? Is he going to be on, a, on the floor uh, when they call out the starting lineups? He could be. I mean, he really could be. I mean, Tabo Cephalosha is a defensive guy. Uh, James Harden can sort of give you more uh, than Tabo can offer right now. I think Tabo, you know, obviously has more experience than – than uh, Harden at this point, but I think he could compete uh, for a starting lineup from uh, in, to, to get into the starting lineup from day one. It just depends on what Scott Brooks wants to do. Mullins is seen more as a de developmental guy. Is you think he's going to be riding the Tulsa Oklahoma City shuttle, or do you think he's just going to spend all the season with the Thunder? You know, I think he's going to be back and forth. I mean, he's going to be. Uh, I think he's going to spend a, the majority of his time uh, in Tulsa because this guy is not ready, but he is a prospect. I mean, he can. He has potential to develop into a shot blocker, a rebounder, uh, a scorer. He can already score and shoot the basketball. So uh, you look at those things that he brings uh, offensively and the potential for defense, uh, you know, I think they've got something good on their hands. Okay, Robert Vaden picked up in the second round by the Thunder, Alabama-Birmingham guy, more or less a scorer with some upside. Can't say that I've ever seen him play, uh, you know, but I do know that he's a project. Uh, Sam Presti likes projects. Uh, he's a shooter. He's going to be, be able to get this team – perimeter shooting at some point down the line uh, if he can develop and tap into his potential. So I think they're just taking a chance on him. Not much of a, uh, of a too much of a gamble when you consider that they didn't give up much for him. Uh, I think that's a, a good way to go if he can develop and tap into whatever they think he could become. Okay, those guys are coming. Darnell, who might be going as this team looks to sort of, it's not a restructure of the roster, but as they fit these guys in. Who might not be with the Thunder when the season starts? Well, Earl Watson is a guy who told me at the end of last season that he doesn't expect to be back. He has an expiring deal. Uh, he expects to be traded. Uh, Damian Wilkins is another guy. I mean, he just got drafted over uh, with James Harden, so he could be gone. Desmond Mason, I think, could be back. I mean, when you look at, uh, you know, who they have now, they have Tybo Cephalosha uh, on the wing. They have James Harden they just drafted. Um, Kyle Weaver, but Kyle Weaver is also a guy who's going to be on, on that Tulsa uh, train back and forth. So I think Desmond Mason, there's room for Desmond Mason to come back. Obviously, he has to, it has to be at the right price. Okay, the Thunder looks to have about maybe $12 million, maybe $14 million in that range available when free agency starts on July 1. Who do you like and who are there some of their likely targets in free agency? Well, you know, I would, I would caution uh, Thunder fans to be very uh, patient with the team this summer. I don't think that they're going to go out and try to get big names. I mean, people look at these Carlos Boozer types, uh, the David Lees, the Paul Millsaps. These guys are going to want big-time money. 
Uh, I think they're going to be a lot more opportunistic uh, come July 1 when the negotiations with free agents start. Uh, you're going to see guys closer to $5 million or less. Uh, Marcin Gortat, the Orlando backup center behind Dwight Howard, showed that he can play on the interior uh, in the finals. Uh, Zaza Pachulia is a guy who's been underrated uh, and unheralded throughout his career in Atlanta. Uh, they, they can add some toughness on the interior uh, for this team, which is really what it needs. Okay, thanks, Darnell. That's all for Inside Thunder Basketball with Darnell Mayberry, but you can follow the best coverage team anywhere every day at News OK and every morning in the Oklahoman. Thank <laughs> you.